The third and final UDL principle involves multiple means of engagement. This principle addresses the why of learning. This region of the brain is responsible for how learners become engaged and how they stay motivated. Students who feel challenged or can relate personally to the approach or material in a course are more likely to become interested or enthusiastic learners. Giving students choices and autonomy regarding their assignments and designing projects and assignments that pertain directly to students' lives increases interest and motivates students to stay focused and perform better. So if you have something you need to set up in your document a particular way, you can add the tabs and then you can just use your tab key on your keyboard and tab through at a particular space in your document. So that's the value of using tabs in your document. But it is kind of neat looking to set up the dotted leaders and it kind of makes it a little professional looking. So you may want to choose that option if you need that. I teach the students how to create tables and queries and reports. We create a class database, so it has all of their information. It has their name, um, their age, if they're in clubs, you know, their hair color, their eye colors. That way, once they learn how to create tables, then filtering for queries, it's all their information that we're looking for. So then they're like, oh, hey, I didn't know you had brown eyes, or oh, he has blonde hair. Um, so that kind of helps me when I'm teaching with them. And then for class activities, once we learn those skills that build on each other, then I can give them a project to um, individualize on their own. So like I did a music database, and they were able to bring in their iPods and do a collection of the music they had on their iPods, and it just fit their uniqueness. Um, also, we get lessons through collaborating with other teachers. I've been at um, three or four different schools, and so my mentor teachers and people I've worked with, I still have a good rapport with and with going to conferences, so we share our lessons quite a bit. Anytime anyone creates a new one, we always you know, email, hey, try this, or I fix this, you know, to bring it back, because with CTE, you're always having to change your lessons to keep up with the times. Everything that I do in class relates to the working world and my students, for the most part, realize that they're going to be going to work somewhere and, and I try to show them you can earn money with this, you can use this in your later life. The reason we're doing this is because in the business world, okay, you have to know how to use these tools. Say for instance, we're eighth grade, so in about five more years, we're going to be heading off to college, right? Yeah. Some of us are going to try to be slick and live in an apartment our freshman year, right? Yeah. Okay, so as you go looking at apartments, they're going to have brochures that have diagrams of the layout of the apartment. And that lets you know how big or small you want your apartment, okay? Real estate. If you're um, going to be a real estate agent, if you have open houses, you might have to create a flyer and you might have a drawing of the house at the bottom. Oh, that's pretty. <laughs> Happy 18th? Who's 18th? My friend. Your friends? Oh, you're going to give this to her? Cool. You can help students maintain their motivation by making course goals and objectives stand out and seem relevant to students by varying the levels of challenge and supporting students at each level. Additionally, your students are more likely to sustain effort in an environment where there is good communication, collaboration is encouraged, and when you provide increased feedback as they master various tasks. How do I take the arrow and my text box and make it one object? How do I group it? What tool do I have to select? Okay, my white arrow, my select object, and then what? Hello, I need more than just Samantha. Do we need to have a quiz? No. Oh, then people better start talking. What do I got to do? We do two different kinds of projects. We do big major projects that are a group project where many students work on a project and they, they produce a piece of equipment and they take it to a show and they show it to individuals who you know, are experts in the field. 
and then we do little individual projects. And so some of these little individual projects are just based on industry testing standards. So the students know this is what I might be expected to do if I go test for somebody I'm going to work for. And then we do some other individual projects that involve a little more creativity and each student produces something and they, they build it themselves. So the, the bench project with the branding irons, I had each student build their own small little stake branding iron and it's not a single student in my class, in, in two classes, not a single one did not complete the exercise and all of them were happy. They had something they took home. They said, Mama, look what I did. What's he going to do now? What's this called? Raising. Nah. Tinning. 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 Be careful, don't melt the don't melt the metal. Back the heat off of it a little bit. There you go. See it run on there? It ran on the bottom side too. That's good. Like it's there it goes. Now blend that end of the joint just a little bit, just with the fire. Just with the fire. Slow, slow, in and out, in and out, in and out. In and out. See those two little bubbles. Whoa, that's it. That was it. See? Students who understand class expectations have guidance in setting personal goals, have a means to build coping strategies, and are able to examine their mistakes and their successes and reflect and learn from them, will be more successful in the classroom and in life. I'm teaching skills in, in the shop, and I'm teaching skills in this lab. But more importantly, I'm teaching students to be able to follow directions, and be able to listen to directions and to do what somebody asked them to do and be proud about their work. I don't accept can't. I don't, I don't expect, I don't expect from my students to say I won't do it. And you, an old teacher I had once upon a time said you're going to get from students what you expect from students. And I, and I expect a higher level of proficiency than sometimes they expect from themselves. And um, if I have a student who's a little bit reluctant, they're still going to do it. Now, they may need a little bit closer supervision and a little bit more attaboy, attaboy, but they're, they're going to do it. And it's, that's where you're going to find that light bulb moment. When, when they finally do it, you're going to see them, aha, I did it. And, and they take that with them. And they take that with them to other things. You know, if I could do that thing Mr. Hancock made me do, I can do this. It's a story of what to do and what not to do. And, and you know, I ended up with uh, both products at the end of the day and was able to show, show the kids, you know, why you don't you know, use this whip and why you would use a paddle and how that happens and, and just the importance of reading all the way through your recipe before you, you, before you start a new recipe. Students want to be able to read I can or I can do uh, on the board. So, you know, something not, not terribly new for us, but something that, you know, sometimes we, we get kind of lackadaisical about and, and we don't always do. But what it does, it, it helps you know, us to communicate uh, what we're doing that day, helps me stay focused as a teacher on what the tasks are at hand, and it helps the kids. You know, they can look back up at the board and say, uh, what are we doing? What is he talking about? And then maybe pick up if they hadn't been paying attention or they got you know, sidetracked with, with something else.